Hello, my name is Lisette Walensky, and I'm a scientist at BD Biosciences. Today we're going to talk about preparing our cells for flow cytometry. When preparing cells for flow cytometry, there are a couple of questions that have to be answered. What type of cells are you analyzing? What is the state of the cells? And will the cells be stimulated? The answers will help guide how you prepare your cells for subsequent staining and analysis. First, what type of cells are you analyzing? Options might include whole blood, PBMCs, tissue-derived cells, cell lines, or other cultured cells. Each of these has its own considerations for handling. Your population of interest determines the type of sample you will prepare. For example, how do you choose between whole blood and PBMCs? Rare lymphoid or myeloid cell populations may benefit from the use of PBMCs since PBMC isolation enriches for these populations. In addition, PBMCs don't require erythrocyte lysis and are amenable to culture and freezing. On the other hand, granulocyte analysis requires the use of whole blood. Once you've determined your cell type, handling at the appropriate temperature can make all the difference. While whole blood can be handled at room temperature, tissue-derived cells and PBMCs are best kept viable by handling on ice. In addition, whole blood lysed with BD fax lysing solution should be kept on ice to preserve granulocyte morphology. Erythrocyte lysis for whole blood can be carried out with BD fax lysing solution or BD farm lysed lysing buffer. The main difference is that the fax lysing solution contains a fixation reagent, while the farm lyse buffer does not. Antigens impacted by fixative should be stained before use of the BD fax lysing solution, since it includes a fixative agent. However, staining after lysis can also impact the performance of certain markers. In these data, CD3 was stained either before or after lysing with BD farm lyse buffer. Staining after lysis shows increased spread of the negative population and decreased brightness. Sometimes you aren't able to process your samples immediately. This can create changes in surface phenotype or response to stimulation. For example, these data show staining for the chemokine receptors CD183 and CD196 performed on fresh or one-day-old whole blood. CD183 and CD196 positive cells are dramatically reduced in the one-day-old sample. To prevent problems like this, consider freezing or fixing cells to preserve cells for later use. That brings us to our second question. What is the state of the cells? Cells might be fresh, frozen, or cultured, and each state has its own needs. Frozen cells undergo stress from freezing and thawing. Resting cells in culture may help restore surface phenotype or biological function. In these data, we can see an increase in chemokine receptor percent positive as cells are allowed to rest after thawing. Frozen and cultured cells, as well as tissue-derived cells, often have many dead cells. These unwanted visitors can be successfully dealt with. First, filtration with a cell strainer can remove clumping cells that can lead to high background staining or clogging of your cytometer. Further cell death can be prevented by maintaining cells at the appropriate temperature. Finally, a viability marker can help resolve live cells. Since dead cells tend to demonstrate unusual autofluorescence and nonspecific staining, using a viability marker to gate them out can improve your analysis. Getting out dead cells can even improve your ability to gate on your population of interest. In these data showing mouse bone marrow, live leukocytes that are heavily contaminated with dead cells become easy to gate on once dead cells are removed. Cultured adherent cells come with their own concerns. Some surface markers are sensitive to the cell lifting medium, such as trypsin, and can be cleaved from the surface of the cell and lost to detection. In this case, it is best to use a gentle lifting medium, such as EDTA or Accutase. Finally, we come to our last question. Will the cells be stimulated? Stimulating whole blood can often be carried out directly in the blood. However, tissue-derived cells, PBMCs, and other cell types may need to be stimulated in culture. The culture conditions are key. You will need to consider an appropriate choice of culture medium, culture length, and the effect on viability. The length of time your cells spend in culture can make all the difference to the success of your assay. Stimulation for phosphorylated proteins is very quick and may require only minutes in culture. However, cytokines may require hours of incubation time. Finally, keep in mind that stimulation itself can induce large amounts of cell death. Therefore, all of the tips we've talked about, filtration, temperature control, and use of a viability marker, will also apply to stimulated samples. With all of these tips and tricks in hand, you should now be able to answer the three guiding questions and use them to navigate sample handling with ease. For information about the products or concepts featured in this video, please visit bdbiosciences.com.